episode six of the Come Up Video Show, ready to go. What's up, folks? My name is Carlos René Castro. I am the host of the Come Up Video Show. Excited for another episode, episode six, um, second week of the podcast, video show, whatever you want to call it, whatever. I'm excited. I'm happy. Got a couple guests lined up this week, so stay tuned for that. Um, tell us, uh, you know, I will appreciate some feedback. How do you guys like in the, the show so far? Tell us how we can improve. Says what we can do better in order for get to get more viewers and for people like you to see more content. And big shout out to our to the artists who've come down to the to the video show and have taken the time of their day to talk to us about their work and their future plans. I I really, I really appreciate it. You know, starting this this uh, video show from the ground up is it hasn't been easy. But with the support with everybody, it's been great. But thank you. Stay tuned. We got more amazing stuff to go. So. Episode six, like I said, uh, we have a special artist, Emiliano Aguirre. Emiliano Aguirre is an interdisciplinary artist based in LA area. His principal medium is filmmaking and photography with a focus on architecture and social economic issues. Her recent work, Tarzar Special Delivery, was showcased at the Post Pride Exhibition for Ace 121 Gallery. So let's bring him on in. Let's see where we are. Emiliano Aguirre, we're live, brother. How you doing, man? Hey, como estas, brother? I'm doing all right. I am here in my little temporary studio, well, at least until my lease is up. Yeah, but, yeah. And I'm doing great, man. How are you? Doing good, doing good, man. Just staying busy. I appreciate you taking the time of your day to join us today in the Come Up Video, the Come Up Video Show. Uh, it's it's an honor, dude. Uh, you know, it's 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 crazy how how long it's been since my first day at Cal Arts, man. I remember no, just, I, I remember like, um, so just a little backstory, me and Emiliano met at Cal Arts up here in Valencia, California. You are a junior now, I believe? Uh, yes, but uh, currently, um, you know, since everything's going virtual, I um, figured, you know, it's everything's weird now because it's all virtual. So right. One one kind of one kind of questions the the point of going back at least at least for the, for for the for the year when everything is like you know mm -hmm. uh, online you know but yeah technically I would be that. Yeah. So a junior in photography and media program at Cal Arts. It, it's no, it's crazy how how time goes by fast because I remember when I you know the first couple emails that I received was from you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was, I was yeah. the academic uh, <laughs> advisor. I remember I was, I was tasked with uh, uh, emailing all of the incoming CalArtians. Yeah, only BFAs though, no MFAs. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, this guy's pretty cool, man. And uh, I mean, man, your, your your layouts for your emails are amazing. So it's crazy how from the initial start to then, and how much your friendship has grown. And how you know we've we've grown as artists and human beings, but like I said, thank you very much, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely. What, Thanks. What's up, man? What What have you been working on? Quarantine, COVID nineteen, twenty twenty. What's up, brother? All right. So, um, so right now I'm working on a uh, on another short film, mm -hmm. and um, I've been uh, working on working on the on pre production for that mainly. And uh, taking photos, doing a lot of uh, doing a lot of photography, you know, because when when things are empty, when public spaces are empty, it's nice to uh, really take in the the uh, the architecture of course places, you know, since uh, since architecture is, you know, what I'm obsessed with. It's one of my focuses these days. My origin, when it comes to photography, my origin is uh, uh, is street photography um, and, and filmmaking mainly. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, before, but really, when it comes to art, the theater, uh, theater, and filmmaking are my are my um, my origin artistically. Tell so us about uh, filmmaking. How how does that process go about making your your short films? Absolutely. So the uh, for the the, the film that uh, one of the films that we'll be um, showcasing here, uh, one of the clips, uh, the short film called Sars Revenge. Sars Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> the quarantine has done to us. Uh, SARS, uh, SARS special delivery. 
um, the process for that really was to create a simple narrative mm -hmm. um, against uh, against backdrops, uh, essentially moving pictures. I wanted each shot to be um, a moving a moving photograph, um, which is why it was which is why the uh, the aspect ratio was the way excuse me it was the way it was, mm -hmm. um, and because uh, I, I wanted it to resemble. Uh, you know, like a regular, a regular photographic print, uh, mm -hmm. your standard one from like a point and shoot, you know? Right. And uh, so uh, I also took into account, of course, going back to architecture, um, I took into account the surroundings of the area. And, and of course I had a very specific palette in mind. I was thinking very um, minimalistic uh, shapes and surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted, I also wanted to, uh, uh, the setting of this short film is also um, back, it, it, it's set about 20 or so years ago. Uh, it says in the title card, it's set uh, a, a score or so ago mm -hmm. uh, that it was set. And I wanted to give this idea of like, you know, what if, uh, what if America, you know, instead of going, instead of going the right wing way, we went more left wing. And so, um, one of the things that I thought about were what are some of the aesthetics what but you know at least turn of the century like what if it was more pastel colors mm -hmm. what if it was you know um, you know there's more you know there's uh, there's more vegetation uh, you know like you, you see a lot of uh, you see there's an absence of, uh, of a concrete jungle you know the traditional urban uh, landscape so one of the things that I want to do there is, is minimize that and really, but re and really focus on themes of uh, you know time and distance because this is a story about uh, a courier mm -hmm. as they make their way from point A to point B delivering a jar of caviar. Um, <laughs> so, I love it. Uh, yeah, um, and, and and it's interesting too because this is supposed to be a state-sanctioned courier. So this is essentially like the postal, like an ode to the postal service, especially nowadays since the postal service is uh, essentially being. Um, how do I put this politely for the sake of the podcast? Um, sodomized by the current administration in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, you know, so it's kind of a note to that. But um, yeah, that's uh, the, the, the process. Uh, it only took, the production itself only took about a few days. And the performer, uh, the, 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 the protagonist, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the actor's name is uh, Fiona. They did an amazing job. Everybody, yeah, shot of her right here. Yeah, every yeah, um, yeah they did a, a great job as the courier, and and I, mm -hmm. I, I'm you know eternally grateful to everybody who who collaborated and who just helped with this with the short film. It was just amazing. Um, this, um, well, the funny thing about this is is that this film as I was uh, working on it, it got better. Like as I was, mm -hmm. as I was actually filming it, I discovered new locations and I was mm -hmm. like, well, I'm gonna take a photo here. You know, we'll, we'll put up the camera here. Well, <laughs> this is actually kind of cool. So there were nice surprises. Th I actually have a fun story about this shot right here. Of the, okay, tell uh, us about it. Um, so if you want, I mean, if you, we can show the clip after the story because it'll, uh -huh. it'll make a lot more sense. So, okay. um, I, uh, so, so the, the airport we were shooting at, uh, we were, I already had this idea of, of where I was going to, um, where, from where I was going to film because the, I had to film it, I wanted to film it at, at, at the part of the landing strip where the uh, planes land. I didn't mm -hmm. want any takeoffs, I wanted a landing because, you know, somehow planes just look more aesthetically pleasing when they land as opposed to when they take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's just my opinion, I guess. But so, uh, what, you know, we got there and it was a windy day and, and this is just a, a really just a one man crew. It's myself and it's the performer because, you know, just as, as myself as a photographer and, and, and the subject, it was really a very minimalistic crew, just as, as minimalistic as the, as those locations. Yeah, no, it looks super simple. The location, we love it. Um, but this, um, oop, my bad. But this, yeah, so this shot right here, uh, I, I found out that because of the wind, the airplanes, all incoming flights, all arrivals have, had been rerouted. 
and they were coming in through a different uh, through a different uh, runway. Mm-hmm. So I was like, shit, okay. But then I found out that the runway, the angle in which the plane in which each aircraft was coming in, was just above a part of the road that had street parking on the side that I would be shooting from. Okay. So I was okay. So I was like, okay. Whereas with the original location, I would have had to park my uh, car uh, ahead of the of the train tracks. I would have had to walk across. Oh my god. You <laughs> know, and, and then like walk walk for like a couple, you know, like a few hundred yards. Before, right. You know, across a long ass fence before I got to, and all of this was very guerrilla. You know, there was very all guerrilla filmmaking, right? So we get to the place, and it's right in front of the cemetery. I think it was. I think it's the cemetery. Yeah. And uh, and it was perfect. I was like, we 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 did like four, I think four takes, four different airplanes, and uh-huh. I settled on this one because uh-huh. I wanted a big plane. I I wanted ideally a FedEx plane because of the colors and how it was very just simple white and purple. But right. then, but then there was a Delta Airlines. Uh, then there was a Delta fl- a plane that flew over, and it was just I was like, oh, it was great. The, the, the blue, the navy blue underbelly, it's gorgeous. And it was a, an Airbus. Anyway, I'm getting into the airplanes. But anyway, yeah, that, that shot, that <laughs> shot came out just amazing. It, you know, it, it was a great surprise. But yeah, and um, if you want to show the clip. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Actually, uh, you can actually, actually start it from uh, 634. 634, 634 okay. 635, yeah, because that's the title card for the second chapter. Of, uh, of the film. 634. So this is 632. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear the sound. Probably not, huh? Can you hear the sound? No, not at all. All right. There we go. That's a nice shot. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, uh, and, and again, like this, this location here, actually, um, I wanted it, it, it's supposed to be a seawall of sorts. Oh. And a lot of people thought it was a seawall, but really this was the Sepulveda Dam in, uh, in the San Fernando Valley. And, um, and I had been wanting to shoot here for a long time. Yeah, look at this composition. I mean, the architecture, the colors, and the yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really wanted to to get like kind of like a daytime noir, you know, mm-hmm. feeling. Um, and uh, and yeah, and, and this has actually been a very famous, notable film location for a lot of films, mm-hmm. and 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 a lot of film locations. You you know, you'd be surprised how many film locations are pretty public. You know, in in Los Angeles, which is an area that is, you know, where public spaces have just been reduced to such a very, very minuscule amount, because the idea of anything public mm-hmm. in America, of course, is viewed as creeping socialism. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that that that's that's the film right there. Love and it. It's a whole thirty. It's a whole thirty minute uh, thing uh, that. Uh, uh, that's on YouTube, and it recently was uh, selected for uh, the Ace One Twenty One uh, post. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. How, how did how did that opportunity come about? So this came through. Um, uh, this came through uh, an actually actually a mutual mentee of of uh, uh, who is actually his name is Chris uh, Christopher, and. Um, works for the uh, Laura Aguilar Trust. And uh, he sent me a, uh, uh, what do you call it? He sent me this link to, to this exhibition. I was like, you know, I, I, I kind of, uh, I, I never thought about submitting the film to an exhibition mm-hmm. because I didn't think that it was, I, I didn't think it would go anywhere farther than really probably just exhibiting it on, you know, on campus or maybe at like a private screening somewhere. But I thought, you know what, the hell with it. I'm going to try it out. So I applied and, um, and I thought I was late. I was like, oh shit, I, you know, I, 
<laughs> but you know, I, I got in and it was, but it was actually a, uh, an exhibition that, that talked about, um, it was really about how do we, how we are interpreting pride, uh, pride month okay. during a time, you know, during this time, which is why it's called post pride because we're living in a post pride, really a post pride yeah, month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As see that. As see that. Doors, pride is about being out and about, you know, and, uh, and out there and like, you know, and, uh, you know, me as a, as a bisexual individual, you know, I, I thought, Hey, I, you know, there's, I don't see, by representation is kind of needed so i figured i'd, I'd go for it and it was just, you know the, the the work a lot of the work that was submitted to that show that was showcased was really really cool really interesting um really showcased some of the anxieties of you know of really being cooked up um and in regards to pride the reason why i submitted my uh czar is because everybody the, the majority of the cast and crew well really everybody who was involved in that and in that project, 95 percent, 95 to I think 98 percent of, mm -hmm. of the people involved were um, queer, okay, LGBT, and mm -hmm. uh, or and people of color, which is what I, which is what I really try to focus on when I, when I do short films, is I try to cast, um, I try to keep it very, I try to keep it very diverse, you know, I like and I because there's not a lot of representation in, in, in the industry, you know? And uh, so I think, um, and I think one of the best ways we can do it is by, you know, um, collaborating with each other and helping each other out and, and all that stuff. But, uh, but yeah. No, that no, was, I really that like that good. point about, sorry about that. I really like that point about giving other people opportunities. Because I remember when you and I were at Arts, when well, my time there, Man, it was our love, bro. You know, me and you would talk about, you know, just being a brown person and being Hispanic at a white institute, primarily white institute institution. So I really, I really do like the idea of you giving opportunities to other people, queer, people of color, diverse, because it just makes, just the, it makes the whole meaning behind the project more meaningful. Do you see yourself showing work more in gallery spaces or what, what kind of, how do you like to present your work in the future? Um, before we get to that, um, I, you, you mentioned earlier just now, um, about, about, uh, our conversations regarding being, uh, Brown in America. I will say my, um, I myself, uh, am, am pretty, and because I do have to acknowledge this, right? You know, I, I, I am pretty fair. Uh, for someone who is, you know, for pe people who would traditionally think, oh, you know, I didn't know you were Mexican. So no, I am. We come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. However, I still benefit from certain privileges that people who, you know, people who don't look like me mm -hmm. would otherwise not benefit from. You know, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that doesn't mean that I haven't been through. That doesn't mean that I haven't been through uh, through some racist bullshit. I have. Um, you know, when I was a kid, my teachers would castigate me for speaking Spanish. When I spoke Spanish, they I had this one teacher in second grade she thought i said a bad word she thought she thought i called her uh bean shit or something like that and i didn't <laughs> I, I didn't i said something else oh yeah but but she took it as that and it was a whole thing so like you know and then there was uh you know people um making fun of me because i was living in mexico when when the swine flu was happening and then when i came back i was told oh you know you brought the swine flu over you know like i was you know shit like that mm -hmm. and, you know and then there's um you know, then of course there's my, my parents, my parents are immigrants, my, my dad, especially like, you know, the, this country hasn't been too nice to him. The nicest it's ever been to him is probably giving him the, like giving him the tools to be able to have the life that he has and for him to be able to give the life that he gave me, mm -hmm. which is great. However, um, the cops, uh, in 1995, right before I was born, before he and my mom, uh, married actually, mm -hmm. Um, he was held at gunpoint by the cops, by the San Marino Police Department, outside of my house, <clears throat> where I grew up, because and this was before I was born, because they didn't believe that a Mexican with an accent owned that type of a house. Right. And, uh, you know, and, and those things, uh, you know, those things, uh, I, I carry that with me. And, 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 I, and, and then there's also the whole, you know, then there's also the, the identity crisis of also being, of, of, 
being a person, a white passing person of color, because then there's also the argument to be made of like, you know, well, if you are, if you are white, then you don't count as a person of color. And it's like, and it's like super, it's like so complicated. And, and like, there's a lot of discussions to be had, mm -hmm. um, which is why, you know, whenever some, whenever someone brings that up, I just, you know, I, I just have to, like, I have to acknowledge my own, my own advantages here that I have. Um, that, you know, that my, my dad sure as hell didn't have. Um, but, you know, he tells me, like, even like, you know, I, I, he, he tells me every day, every day, every chance he gets, he says, you know, you have to realize that, that you have a lot of privilege that I did not have when I came to this country. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, there's a lot of things that you can get away with that I could not because because you look a certain way or talk a certain way um you know and then there's then there's of course that whole you know again in in, in latinx families you know we have you know we have family members who are like ah, well, es que salió bueno, you know like <laughs> wait, wait, wait. you know yeah like you know then there there are issues of anti-blackness in our own cultura that you know we have to tackle and all that stuff and like right. you know but uh anyway i'm I'm going off on a tangent, my dude, but I, you know, but I, I just, whenever I have conversations with Hintha about, about culture and about <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exa exa like, you know, I have to, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's empowering and it's great and it's amazing because, uh, especially being at a PWI, because CalArts is a predominantly white institution. Um, and uh, it's, you know so, and it's very you know and, and, and you can feel it mm -hmm. you know oh, people mean yeah and people mean well they mean well but they have their moments you know god bless them all um and uh but the the essence here is the collaborative aspect of um of the arts mm -hmm. which is why i do which is why i love to do what i do because when i am able to meet different people uh, who have different talents who, and, and who can use those talents or, or, or who can bring those talents to the table to create, uh, to create a narrative or to create a, a story or project. Um, it, it flourishes into this, into this beautiful thing. And the, and the end product could be, um, you hope for the best. Sometimes it doesn't come out great. Um, <laughs> most of the time, it most of the time it comes out, pretty good you know pretty good yeah. but yeah. there's always going to be there's always going to be that one oh, my bad i think i got like some weird notification there's always going to be that one time or two times like the, those few times where it's truly going to be like oh that one was just a little better than expected mm -hmm. you know i'm going to put that in my back burner um yeah but um but yeah <laughs> i like it dude tell us about your experience at color so far you talked about, you know, um, you know be a, a white institution. Whoa. Um, I mean, it's been, I mean, look, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest. My, my experience has, has been great so far. Everything, I mean, uh, of course, up until the, up until the pandemic, right. everything, of course, is, is weird. But everything before that, when things are normal, as they say, you know, re really nice. Like, like that, that film was, uh, that film was, I, I think that the peak, not the peak, what am I saying? I think that the best thing that came out of it, one of the best things that came out of my experience there was, was that, was being able to make, being able to have the access to make that, uh, that short film. The resources, would you say? Hmm? The resources? Oh, just starting with the architecture, the location, the starting with that, just mainly that, and also just the talent and, uh, and just everything people there you know it's um and 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 there are um the, the good thing about it i remember is that we were learning about redlining in critical studies which is like the, for those who don't know the general education yeah. you know and uh okay it, um, so so there's there's a level there is a level of, of education like they're trying um and uh they're not perfect but they're trying um that being said going back to um, going back to the other, uh, the, the other photos actually, mm -hmm. because I wanted to, um, <clears throat> I was talking about my, uh, my origins in street photography. Yeah. 
Um, this, this is right. Like this was uh, this was a, a study I did that was. Um, Sorry about that. Informed, uh, informed by the work of uh, Alan Sakula, because this was for an exhibition that was done by a few MFAs that uh, it was an ode to, to Alan Sakula's really, uh, really as a reference to his work uh, dismantling modernism. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's called The Decay of Industry. And if you want to go through the first, through each photo. Mm -hmm. we can Yeah, so, oh, that's a different one. But, but each, going back to this one. So uh, what I thought was, okay, when I think of industry mm -hmm. and when I think of, when I think of uh, how modernism destroyed industry. But modernism, okay, modernism is a, is a huge term. It, 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 you know, what, what does it even mean? It's a huge term. I'm not going to use $15 terms right now. Mm -hmm. The... What basically what I wanted to capture was how you know you see this you see these railroads you see the industrial part of Los Angeles along the LA River which really was a boom town in you know during the Industrial Revolution during the um, you know uh, especially during the early 20th century uh, and uh, but then the later 20th century it became a hub for uh, you know, a lot of the lofts were abandoned, so it became a hub for artists. This, you know, this is where the arts district is, and it's where my my dad, when he first, when he came to Los Angeles um, in the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, first was in Eagle Rock, but then he moved to Factory Place, which is which is right around here where the sweater was taken. And now it's super gentrified, so it's kind of like this place keeps keeps dying mm -hmm. and then like regenerating and like it, it's it, like it keeps reincarnating itself yeah and, and it's I weird it, yeah i see it and, and but like and you still you still see the essence you still see the history there mm -hmm. but you don't but you know but you don't have you don't you, like you see that you see the history there but you don't um i'm sorry no let me rephrase i, I misspoke mm -hmm. you feel the history but you don't you don't really necessarily see it happening. I mean, you you can see you can see the train tracks, but those those tracks have probably been replaced. You know, they've been replaced maybe I don't know for maintenance over the decades. But um, but you know, but we see the train. What is the train? The train, or at least the the staple of American transportation in the 20th century, was the railroad. Mm -hmm. And now the railroad is really just used for leisure or you know, or business, and I'm not talking about public transit. I'm talking about, um, I, I'm talking specifically about commuter, you know, commuter trains like the Metrolink don't count, like the Amtrak, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, big rail, as they say, you know. Um, but yeah, and I think this was actually taken during, uh, was it during the wildfires? I think it was during the wildfires. Mm -hmm. It's during, a clean shot. This, say what? It's a very clean shot. It's yeah, thank you. I, was, I, I, it took me, I don't, I, I took like 20, 30 shots before mm -hmm. I got, but I wanted to get it. The train was not expected, actually. It was going to be just one print, but then I thought, wait a second, I want, I want some activity here. So I thought, <laughs> you want some action? Yeah. You want some action. I would have been great if I had a plane, but the planes would have been kind of like a dot, I guess, and if you put it up to scale it would be a tiny little thing you would right. see it but the um but yeah it, that this is what it turned out to be and it was uh, it was pretty pretty good i was happy with it let me see where there's actually a uh there's actually a text that goes with it okay yeah let's put that up right now which i which i hold on a second i think oh my goodness i forgot about the text because the the no, 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 not that one. For the the, the previous the previous photo, um, that one has mm -hmm. a uh, that that there's a text that goes with it. I'm I'm gonna look for it. I am certain that I have it. In other words, let's talk about this image real quick. Let me annotate this. Absolutely, yes. 
No, I really like I really like the oh shit. How do you do this? I never done this before. Let me see. I'm trying to try to do scribbles. Scribbles. I no, I really like the. Oh yes. Like the half and half. Like you see, like half here is just like like a like a cold tone, or here you have like these like radiations of like just warm warm colors and. And the yes. have a combination of both, which is great. And then these tracks just lead you just right here, man. Do you, yeah, will, do you is composition very important to you or, or what do you look forward to in an image? Oh, composition is, is uh, everything to me. I mean, I would, be, um, I would be a fool if I did not mention how nitpicky I am with uh, <laughs> with how I compose a shot. It's everything has to align. Mm -hmm. And and like a, if I, if, if it's a, I mean, it's much harder if I do it handheld, but really it isn't as long as you have good balance and you're able to like not, you know, not freak out, you know, not have, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's really just, um, it's, it's really just patience. Uh, patience has a lot to do with it as mm -hmm. well. Because to compose the perfect shot, it's, you know, there's no such thing as perfection. Yeah, there's no such thing as perfection. And I think one of, this is one thing I will say. I, I one of my, uh, one of the things I, I wish I could work on a bit more is not to make things, not, not to expect things to come out perfect. I'm definitely, like, perfectionism is something that, that plagues me. Like a, like a, uh, an MF. But, I survived. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely feel you. No, that's the thing too. When I started this podcast, or well, when I start anything in general, the whole thing is that I always the whole, the thing that holds me back is being perfect uh, a perfectionist at first. But it's okay to make mistakes, man. That's a whole process of you know becoming something or creating something like the process. And for you, what do you look forward to? Is it the products? Is it the pro the the process? Is it the final product? Or is it talking about the work? What are you most excited about? about this Ooh. whole, um, you know, creating thing? Uh, for me, it's definitely the final product. Mm -hmm. I mean, the final product is, well, okay, well, it, it's complicated to say the final product because we have an idea of a final product. Like, we, we, we think we know what our final product is going to be, but then it comes out differently and we either love it or hate it. So, I I, I will say the most the thing that i look forward to the most or I, I guess the most important thing is really the idea as long as the idea is there and the idea is executed mm -hmm. even if that execution is is you know i later find out i didn't like it or i thought i decided it was poor execution as long as it was as long as the idea itself is there that's what matters because if you like if if i lose sight of the idea or if i lose the essence or the foundation of the work or the subject matter, then the work is unorganized and it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like it's going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel that, man. No, for, I mean, I feel like your idea is just great, man. Like the way you think and the way you're, you're very just organized about your words is, 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 is super interesting. I'm excited to see the, the work they create next and the whole projects. Would you still like me to send, send me the, you know, send me the other file? uh yeah i can't find it so we can just move on to the next image it's okay fine. no worries man no, no thank you man I, I appreciate you coming to the podcast dude just to find it uh to end it let's uh let's let's end it with some quick fire questions absolutely oh i love quick fire quick fire this, 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 like, right, you ready? this like uh like james lipton's uh, uh pivo questionnaire is it like that or oh uh, it's just it's just to get your mind thinking i just like people to know a little bit about yourself yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. The, you know, something relaxed and chill and whatnot so uh, yeah, what's your favorite color? All right. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue? Oh, see, I just said, okay. Blue. Uh, favorite camera? Whichever one I'm using. Favorite food? Carne en su jugo. Ooh, that was I think, yeah. I should have. I should have known that. I should have known that. I should have known that. That's, that sounds super good right now. Then favorite restaurant in LA. Oh, favorite restaurant in LA. Oh, I've got to say it's. Oh my God! I was just there. 
There was this place in downtown called Artesian House. Okay. But they closed down, so they're no longer in existence. Was it COVID? Existence. But if I if I wanted to choose a restaurant that I really really love, it's probably um, La Gelaguetza, which is a Oaxacan restaurant. Nice, in, uh, good, good, good. So like, yeah, because you know you can't. The the only thing that they don't have chapulines there, uh, ch- grasshoppers for those wow. who for those who don't know what chapulines are, like, they like. Oh, the grasshoppers are so good, especially when they're made. When you have them on mojo de ajo with I always wanted to try that. I always wanted to try that, honestly. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's really good stuff. But yeah, that anyway, that's my favorite restaurant that I can think of. All right, sounds good. And three words I would describe. Describe me? Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> Get your mind thinking. Yeah, because chaotic. Chaotic, okay. Uh, chaotic, organized, which is, I guess, they're two opposites. Yeah, but that's the point. Chaotic, organized, and um, uh, passionate. Passionate. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you coming down to the podcast. Where can people find <laughs> you your work, dude? Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. I look forward to coming on, you know, to coming on again and talking and, you know, I look forward to more podcasts and seeing what else you have because... Yeah, no, I'm excited, dude. Like yeah. I said, I have uh, other other podcasts lined up. Um, I'm still kind of like, you know, like just playing around with the platform. It's going to be three episodes a week. It's going to be four. But right now I'm just going to get as much people as I, as I can to work on this and other stuff that's coming up. But thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, let us know where, you, where where people can find your work. Uh, uh, you can find it. Uh, well, I have an Instagram, which uh-huh. is uh, E M A G E B at E M A G M D, and uh, right now it's uh, it, it's. I mean, it's always it's private, but you can just follow, and I'll obviously get back to you. You know, I'm not. Yeah, like, definitely, definitely, no, for sure. I'm not, like, I'm not an influencer or anything, so I'm not. Gonna be like, <laughs> I don't know who you are. You know. Um, and, and then, of course, there's also my YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel, which is um, widely so. It's W-I-D-L-E-Y, uh, W-I-D-L-E-Y-S-O. Like, yeah, no, definitely. I'm gonna provide those yeah. links to the. I'm gonna provide the links to those uh, two sites on the description box. So, we'll see your work and see what you're up to. So, thank you so much, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you. See thank you so much. And, thank you so much. and stay safe, man. All right, pues un abrazo, carnal. Nos vemos. Happy to have you.